Well, hello, everybody. My name is Sam Williams, and I'm joined today with uh, uh, Michael Kahir and Max Thesira, as well as Daniel Brunton. Uh, and welcome to this first Industry Innovat Innovators Meetup. Uh, today, we've got uh, uh, a few things to go through with you about what we're putting together in terms of asset-intensive uh, enterprise innovation. And it's a new initiative that is uh, part of a partnership between Accelerate, uh, Certus Digital, and Tech Data. So the concept of the industry innovator community is to connect asset intensive professionals to a range of things from innovation to ecosystems and bring collaboration together between those innovation communities and the ecosystem partners that or partnerships that have been developed. So in a nutshell, that is the, the concept here around the industry innovator community. To set the scene, I want to just uh, touch upon how uh, the digital transformation and the fourth industrial revolution is really changing not only our professional lives, the lives that we have in uh, enterprises, but us personally as well. So with that in mind, I just want to set the scene with this short clip from uh, the World Economic Forum. What is happening to the world? Everything is changing. The very idea of human being some sort of natural concept is really going to change. Our bodies will be so high tech, we won't be able to really distinguish between what's natural and what's artificial. Inside our own heads, is the most complex arrangement of matter in the known universe. You might ask yourself, can we get to be superhumans? So I guess the, the thing about this is that uh, everything is literally changing before our eyes. The, the pandemic is a good example of how the world around us has changed in quite a rapid pace. But the same things are going on in terms of the adoption of digital technology. And that's a lot of what's driving uh, this initiative in terms of industry innovation. How do we adapt uh, to this rapid change that's occurring. So with that in mind, there's a, a new challenge facing industry professionals. Uh, and, and it comes down to the fact that digital business transformation is actually about sweeping change. It changes everything about how products are designed, manufactured, sold, delivered, and serviced. And what it's causing enterprises to do is rethink how they execute with new business processes, management practices, information systems, as well as uh, creating uh, entirely new ways of interacting with customers and building customer relationship. So Thomas Siebel puts this quite well in his book, Digital Transformation, Survive and Thrive in an era of mass extinction. So let's talk about it in a practical sense uh, in relation to, you know, you and I in an enterprise. You know, we're grappling with how to navigate the impact of digital disruption on our industry and how do we innovate to maintain today's competitive advantage while experimenting with those innovations that will create new strategic advantage as well as enable long-term evolution of the enterprise. And so you may be familiar with the Three Horizons model uh, where uh, 
day-to-day or sustaining innovation is something that we do uh, all the time. And it is typically classified as optimizing, modernizing, maintaining, and it has at essence a defensive uh, aspect to it. We are defending the core business from competition. The second horizon is that of near-term strategic innovation. And that's to drive growth into adjacent markets, nurture emerging new business and new frontiers. And that typically takes place over a two to five year horizon. The longer term transformation, which we typically associate with innovation, is around pioneering entirely new products and services and seeding business opportunities um, for 10 years time. And so it has a five to 10 year time horizon. So if you're kind of, uh, if you're in the business and you are concerned with ensuring that you you deliver on your KPIs over the course of a year or two years, you're going to be concerned with sustaining innovation. Uh, It is the further up you move in the organization, the greater the concern that there is around how do we create uh, strategic innovation and transformational innovation. Uh, So what we wanted to do in the uh, industry innovators community is actually talk about, debate, uh, and have dialogues around the differences between these three things and look at how the industry is changing and evolving across all three horizons. Just to put this into the everyday reality uh, uh, that we find ourselves in, you know, the the challenges dealing with legacy systems and internal processes and perceived risk is a little bit like um, the IT system that you see depicted here. Uh, And enterprise IT is a whole mix mishmash of old systems, new systems, and capabilities as well in terms of the IT department. And so from a day-to-day operations standpoint, how do we move from just having conversations around defensive innovation, where we're seeing things through the lens of risk mitigation and defense, to entering into a mode of operation where you're always improving And in other words, treating innovation as something that you do continuously. So that's the challenge that there is for uh, enterprise professionals today. One of the things about uh, the three horizons and the innovation horizons that we're talking about, uh, there's a model that is variously attributed to Google and Amazon in terms of what they call the 70-20-10 rule uh, around the allocation of resources into the different types of innovation from sustaining strategic to transformational. And so the argument goes that you put 70% of your resources into sustaining innovation, 20% into strategic innovation, and 10% into that transformational innovation. What's been interesting over the years, though, is that the returns on that investment actually are inversely proportional. So in other words, that 70% of resource allocation actually yields 10% of your long-term gains. And the 20% that you put into strategic innovation yields 20% in terms of uh, medium-term gains. And the 10% that you place in terms of your big bets, if you like, uh, actually yields 70% of your return on investment. Michael, is there anything that you would add to this from an asset intensive perspective? Um, Just that we would would be seeing that happening now with um, lots of organizations trying to to look at how do they absorb uh, multiple sources of information and and, and technologies, and um, that that investment that they do now under that ten percent is um, you know geared up to be a big part of their business going um, forward in the long term. Okay, marvelous. 
Um, I want to talk about uh, this, uh, uh, an idea around uh, innovation and a compelling event, if you like, that is forcing organizations to, to look at how they adapt to uh, digital disruption and in particular electric vehicles. And part of the challenges you have upstart companies out there that are eating the lunch or nibbling at the, the coattails of uh, incumbent organizations. So in the, in the vehicle space, you obviously have the incumbent car manufacturers. And there have been a number of electric vehicle startups, of course, the most notable being Tesla. But this is an example here um, of an electric vehicle startup called Canoe. And it is an innovative approach to how you build and manufacture uh, uh, electric vehicles. And in fact, it has a different ownership model or ownership perspective uh, to, to add to it. And so they, they use something called a skateboard design, which is a single chassis design that enables several different types of vehicle to be constructed around the skateboard or single chassis. So in the first example that we saw before, you have a uh, people mover. Uh, here we have an example of a delivery vehicle uh, in action. And then you have an RV. Uh, so you, you can see that the, the same basic uh, model is possible and you, you're seeing modular componentry that has been designed in a way that you can uh, not just retrofit uh, the vehicle uh, as you become a second owner of that vehicle. So ownership, you know, most vehicles pass from one owner to another. It's quite possible that you can actually reconfigure your vehicle as a consequence of uh, being a second owner or a third owner and change the way in which this vehicle operates around you. So what we're seeing emerge in the car market is ever more increasing uh, persona-based or personalized experiences around the use of uh, an electric vehicle platform. And so just to illustrate this idea uh, here, we have the skateboard or the EV platform as it uh, comes together. And one of the unique things about the canoe design is it's uh, fully drive by wire or steer by wire which means that the steering mechanism can be located in any location. And you can see here there are adjustable overhangs so you can have different bodies on the chassis. And uh, one of the things about the skateboard design is it's so low to the ground that it has uh, a significantly better road holding than most RVs or vans uh, of a similar ilk, if you like, or petrol powered ones. And so here you can see some of the examples of how this can be configured, reconfigured, and the use changed um, through different owners and ownerships. So the reason for talking about Kano is that it's illustrative of uh, the value web that is being created uh, around this platform model of not only building vehicles, but uh, building a business today. And so the EV ecosystem that's built around this platform is uh, uh, based on the shared imperative of reducing CO2 emissions. Uh, so adopting EV is driving at new forms of collaboration, innovation, and interdisciplinary partnerships. And so you can see here, as you look at the ecosystem on the right-hand side, that the implications of EVs are quite extensive from the different power sources that are necessary in order to generate the electricity to the, the grid uh, a load that will need to be adjusted or improved in order to support so many electric vehicles being charged to all series of things around uh, infrastructure, 
uh, in terms of transformers, submeters, and um, the, the types of support that might be required for electric vehicles. You've got home charging station at, uh, um, uh, installations, uh, different financing solutions, uh, uh, battery technology, different materials, and commercial charging stations being rolled out. So there's a whole ecosystem that is being developed that no matter whether you're a utility or a manufacturer or a, or a consumer, you're all being impacted by this new form of transportation. Michael, is there anything that you would add to, to this? Um, just that, you know, that's, that's something that's been driven into the industry. And, and of course, you know, traditional businesses need to and be able to adapt and change as a result of that. It's, it's forcing uh, a whole new way of um, how do you re relate and, and, and operate? How do you look at information that you've got? How do you deal with the multiple different um, components that bring that solution together? It's very different business and, and it's driving a tremendous amount of change within uh, the asset intensive, particularly in the electricity sector. Yeah, and I think there was another example that you wanted to talk to. Uh, and this, again, yeah, the, this one here is particularly uh, close to us uh, the, in Christchurch and Earthquake. And, and I guess this is, um, you know, this is the, the, the earthquake was the compelling event. Um, but in order to innovate and in order to do things differently and in order to transform as an organization, there was, uh, uh, there needs to be that compelling event or that uh, ability to identify the problem that we're trying to go after. In this particular example in Christchurch, the, it's, um, unfortunately there was an earthquake, but it also um, drove uh, our community to come together to say, hey, we need to do things differently now. We need to look at new ways of doing things. Um, there's a raft of information we can get hold of. There's a raft of technologies. Uh, and the, the uh, really um, hit home for me because it was, a, it was the power of the community coming together to, to try and uh, look for solutions around the, um, what I guess Christchurch have been put into in, uh, as a result of the earthquake. If we can play the video, that would be great. Infrastructure, but it also gave us a real passion for doing things differently. And it gave us the opportunity to actually plan a new city for the way we live today. Smart Cities is about new technologies and new approaches for the way we do things to make our city a better place to work, live and play. The Smart Cities program can try things before we implement them operationally. The problem that the council had was whenever there's an earthquake, and we know about earthquakes, anything over five, all the buildings would need to be inspected. So we produced um, a heat map, very simple to look at, red, orange, and green. And at the same time, we're able to list the buildings that they should go and look at, rather than look at the whole city. These conferences are really great to meet the other partners and establish contacts because, uh, you know, we can all work together, we're all focused on different things. And a smart city needs to be a, an open collaboration of of cities, citizens and partners, so for us this is just an awesome event and experience. The ability to bring that together in Christchurch City in a way that makes the city effectively function with its people, so there's no physical divide between uh, the built environment and the human environment. Smart Cross is a, uh, it's an interactive game, it uh, sits on a, uh, on a pedestrian pole and allows a uh, pedestrian to play a game of Pong against uh, the person on the other side of the road uh, while they wait to cross the, cross the street. These Devices. This is the first one here. It's our little pip. Um, it's called the Level Sense, and it goes under the lid of a rubbish bin, like in a car park or a public facility, and will measure the level of rubbish and report back in real time as to uh, the level of rubbish and whether they need to be cleared. We're doing total rebuild of half a city block, so we're putting a lot of technology in there and keen to share it with people. Um, and I'm not the only one doing that, I know that, um, which is great. 
So now we're starting to open up to the community. We've got something to show. We want to uh, open up to all commercial partners, developers, and we really want to hear more from them about how they want to shape their city. So, that, so, yeah. So, just to finish that off, Sam. Yeah. Um, so, for me, that you know, that was on a, a sad, compelling event, but a compelling event nonetheless, and it 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 it, uh, it showed what was uh, the art of what's possible when multiple um, partners and technologies and can come together for uh, a, a common cause, and and I guess that's the that's the the crust and the real purpose of this group is is around how can we do that as a community and i guess dan you have some things to say about that from a tech data perspective yes thanks samuel um nice to uh, speak with you all today um as samuel and michael have kind of led in from the start of the presentation uh what this whole or this whole discussion boils down to is what we framed here as the accelerate program um, and to be clear, and, and you know, not to lose sight of the focus here, the mission being to develop ecosystems that help enterprise customers optimize and innovate digitally. Um, that's also being cognizant of that being or that occurring across short, medium, and long term. Obviously, um, I'm going to go into the way in which that comes together, but the, there's probably a safe bet to say that the, there's three core pillars to to this program and what we want to put together. So the first being innovation communities, uh, which is you know, uh, exactly what you've all joined for today. And obviously um, it shows the line of thinking that you have and you know, the interest that you have within your own enterprises. We wanna be focused on shared experiences of all your enterprises and yourselves um, as you're going through your individual innovation journeys. What learnings do we, can we take from that? Um, and what, what intel can be shared amongst the ecosystem for, for greater success? And thirdly, we want to build transformative ecosystems. So that's where we're really pulling together uh, participants that have specialisations across a range of disciplines. Um, they have a range of capabilities and a, a range of specialisations, which is really the luxury that Tech Data as a, a global solutions distributor has in having that, that view across the landscape. I think as we, we move on, um, this is where we can really start to get down into the details of what this ecosystem is built on. And, and it is built on four key pillars, but uh, an important thing to focus on here or to, to highlight is that it is all centered on industry innovation leaders and professionals such as yourselves. So yes, enterprises are important and, and you know, not losing sight of, uh, of organizations and the direction they're heading. However, um, it is important and this, this program is built on innovation leaders within those enterprises. Uh, an important thing to also note is that they're not always uh, located within the IT sector of the organisation. They can be in lines of business uh, or in, in a whole variety of different areas across the enterprise. But if we can get participation from innovation leaders, that's what drives success across a whole variety of different enterprises. Um, so one of the first components of these ecosystems is around capabilities. Um, and I sort of talked to this point as well as the preceding point um, in the same breath. So there's gonna be a spectrum of engagements that uh, these innovation leaders will have with this ecosystem. So on one end of the spectrum is in the event of an unknown problem. You know, innovation is always something that's front of mind. However, the problem or even the, the goal is not necessarily clear. And that's where we want participants in these ecosystems to be able to lead uh, and provide some thought leadership around um, what problems need to be resolved and, you know, what's on those horizons that, that Sam sort of touched on earlier in the presentation. The other end of the spectrum uh, is when we have uh, engagements from, from you all or, or from these investment leaders around a specific problem that is defined, it is understood, however, the way the solutions to address that problem are not, they're not clear or they're not necessarily um, the, the range of options is quite broad. So that's where we can really start to lean on the, the expertise uh, and the solution sets within these ecosystems to start to, again, provide some thought leadership as to we understand the problem. This is from experience what we're seeing as the best addressing that, which is a good segue into the third component, which is really around the relationships and the connections that 
we want to really focus on building within these within this asset intensive ecosystem. So as I sort of touched on earlier, uh, we want to make sure that we're leading with um, experiences that our peers have had and intel, uh, industry expertise and intel that accumulatively we can start to leverage uh, that, that's going to yield the greatest success from these innovation pursuits. And the fourth component, uh, last but not least, is the infrastructure and the, and the te actual technology stacks that underpin these transformations. So that being across cloud, connectivity, IoT devices, and of course, analytics and, and database tools, um, they're all gonna underpin the actual um, realization of these, innovate, of these innovative pursuits and programs that you all individually wanna pursue in, in your enterprise. Um, just to push on to give some examples um, of the types of industries that this program or this ecosystem is really want to focusing on. So uh, utilities, um, manufacturing, transport and infrastructure providers, public sector, of course, uh, and, and healthcare we're seeing is some of the focus areas of the group. Uh, some key, uh, key organisations to, to bring this to life is, as I said, Tech Data being a program facilitator and having the luxury of having a view across the entire or a wide reaching vendor landscape. Um, our Beacon Park service, which is obviously uh, a lot of you would be familiar with, with great industry expertise and from a program management perspective that pulls this all together, accelerate. Some examples of uh, organisations that would fit into these four, or participants would fit into these four categories, being obviously the likes of AWS, Azure, IBM, from a, a solution stack perspective, uh, from an um, infrastructure perspective. From a solutions perspective, very wide reaching from Institute of Drones uh, to analytics uh, providers and specialist organisations. Uh, from digital expertise, we want to include, or we will be including a lot of uh, consultancy organisations, a lot of names you would recognise there, Becker, uh, Kindrel, um, and of course, uh, Certus uh, has specific consultancy arms that they can lean on as well. And lastly, the alliances and the networks that we really want to leverage the expertise of uh, on a whole, whole variety of different ways. Uh, Section 4 being an example of some education assets that we've got uh, accessible to the group, uh, as well as to the other end of the spectrum, the World Economic Forum, obviously uh, from an industry insights perspective, something that we, all, we want to leverage as much as possible. Now, this program has come to life in some form for Tech Data UK uh, two years ago now, so they're a little bit ahead of where we're up to. However, they have seen great success from the industry ecosystems that they've built. Um, I just want to touch quickly, very quickly on one of those, um, which is very relevant to all of us being um, Backsport. So Backsport actually came about um, off the back of COVID and the impacts that that had across many industries and even on a personal level. Um, to demonstrate the value of what this ecosystem brought, Backsport actually combined the specialist uh, skills of microbiologists with um, a more enterprise uh, investment focused personnel to build this point of care limbs platform. So limbs being a, a laboratory information management system. What they were able to actually bring to the ecosystem, their healthcare ecosystem this was, um, was a breadth of solutions ranging from laboratory, uh, laboratory grade uh, data aggregation platforms down to handheld uh, uh, devices that were specific to uh, individual point of care treatments. Um, so, from a healthcare perspective, the innovation and the, the disruption that, that brought on the range of uh, a range of levels was quite uh, quite impressive, and that was something the whole ecosystem was able to leverage um, or, or, or learn about and, and leverage as required. The next example is probably more specific to the asset intensive space, but it was again. Uh, it was pulled together through the, the UK asset, the asset intensive ecosystem. So this was uh, Visualize Info. Visualize Info specialise in uh, 3D scans and, and 3D imaging. Um, upon their participation in the ecosystem and starting to deal with uh, some of the innovation leaders within that ecosystem, they identified a gap in their asset management systems or tools or platforms such as Maximo in that the 3D scans or imagery, imagery wasn't a component or didn't have any smart supplied to it as the um, asset management platforms were able to provide. 
So on identifying that gap and that option to, to transform the solution, they were able to bring together the Maximo asset management platform, which you, many of you would be familiar with, with Visualize Info's 3D scan technology. Um, there's a basic little um, diagram or, or picture in that, in that screen that you can see there, but from an insights perspective, it was able to provide a whole bunch of new use cases that these participants were able to leverage their asset management platforms for. Um, and again, continues to, to transform what they're traditionally able to use the asset management systems to achieve. I might Frank, wrap thanks. up there and, and pass back to you, Samuel. Thanks, Dan. Um, so, yeah, the, as Dan mentioned, the uh, ecosystem uh, approach is one that was pioneered by Tech Data in the UK, and it's uh, actually proven to be quite successful in terms of engaging with different organizations and enterprises as they try and innovate uh, within their environment. So what is this uh, industry innovator community all about? What we want to do is bring together digital professionals to master innovation in the asset intensive environment and particularly within asset intensive enterprises. And that's so that we can collaboratively level up our skill sets together, uh, the knowledge that we need, shift our mindset uh, in relation to digital technology and embrace new ways of working, uh, and get access to the key resources that are going to enable the next generation of digital business. So that's the, the mission, if you like, of the ind industry innovators community. And I just want to go through some of the components uh, of that here. So you might recall the three horizons, which we've been talking about. Um, what we want to do is establish a number of working groups and special interest groups that are looking at uh, different types of innovation as they fall within the horizons. Uh, so. Michael, maybe you want to touch briefly on the working groups that you've already established uh, in terms of Horizon One. Yeah, we um, and we've we've created these um, communities uh, who who come together and and they are very much specialised on um, uh, working on uh, identifying how they can improve and innovate in that particular area. So it's very focused on process or, or process area. It's about sharing of um, the experiences and, and everyone seems to be very open to, to share where they are, um, where they are in their journey, where their challenges are, how do they improve. And, um, and it's, been, it's been a fabulous engagement and, and that's really exactly what we wanted. They are, they are bringing ideas around how to prove that the community can can also um, take advantage of. And, and so it's been quite successful and great, great to see. And and for the uninitiated um, Maz Tech? It's, um, it's about uh, technical um, innovation, how to leverage different um, challenges from a purely technical perspective. So it's very much pitched at, at IT professionals, architects looking at how does their platforms meet um, together? How can they take that um, platform thinking type approach in terms of, I have um, applications such as um, Maximo, for example, um, how do I leverage that in amongst everything else that I've got in my enterprise and, and how does that fit within my cloud strategy? So trying to enable um, IT professionals to create that foundation so that the business can get the business outcomes that they are are trying to achieve, and and in Horizon Two, we we've we've kind of breaking some of those business challenges down into logical groups, uh, where um, people are trying. We have a we are trying to identify a problem or initiative that in a particular segment, whether that be, you know, asset performance. Um, getting insights or, or keeping people safe or even being ready for for outside influence like the EV that we talked about or an earthquake. Um, 
how can you innovate and bring together like-minded people who are trying to, to solve um, those type of problems in those type of areas um, and, and drive it from that perspective? Yeah, and then in Horizon 3, this is the macro level stuff, if you like, that is confronting not only the industry, but us as a broader society. Uh, and there are some specific aspects to uh, things like carbon change, uh, the uh, sustainability initiatives that there are at a government level, uh, different ones in relation to compliance uh, in relation to carbon emissions, as well as EV adoption. And I suppose the response to the pandemic uh, would kind of fit somewhere in between Horizon 2 and Horizon 3. Like it was a rapid pivot that a lot of organizations had to undertake. Um, but there are uh, longer term uh, aspects of the pandemic, which are causing changes to how we utilize space, how we interact together, uh, that sort of fit in this Horizon 2, Horizon 3 space. And I guess, um, Max, is there anything that you would add from a, a perspective around digital transformation and the Horizon 3? Yeah, sure. Um, well, across all three horizons, uh, some of the challenges that organizations are having are things like, what capabilities do I need? You know, Horizon 3, that very future focused, uh, um, re reacting to legislation that might come out or a compelling event that we talked about might need different skills to the sustaining innovation in Horizon 1, which is all about, um, you know, optimizing and modernizing your current operations. And so, how do you build those skills? How do you deliver to your current commitments while transforming your organization? These are some of the things and some of the challenges that organizations are thinking about when they're looking across these three different horizons. And so that's an element that uh, organizations and executives in organizations really need to take into account when they're considering their digital transformation journey. Yeah, and so the idea here is that no matter where you fit within the organization or what your perspective might be from a sustaining strategic or transformational standpoint, there's an opportunity for uh, us to collaborate together and understand some of the newer frameworks and some of the uh, change management um, challenges and learning challenges that there are around these three different horizons. So part of what we want to do in the community is enable you to be able to participate no matter what your interest is across Horizon 1, 2, or 3. So let's just talk about how the, uh, the innovation challenge um, comes together in this program in relation to the ecosystem side of things. So the community is uh, a community of industry peers and it's focused on uh, enterprise innovation. And the, the people that are sitting inside uh, the enterprises who are concerned with operational innovation and these different types of innovation in the, the pie chart on the left-hand side, um, we're wanting to bring them together uh, in this community and uh, then we have an ecosystem on the right-hand side, which is an interdisciplinary partner ecosystem that Dan was talking about earlier, where there are solutions, capabilities, connections, and technology to bring to bear. And the gray circle in, in here is the marketplace or the concept of bringing these different resources to bear that the community members can gain access to. Uh, so the ecosystem is working in lockstep, if you like, with the community to bring together in a collaborative way uh, new solutions, capabilities, uh, the technology and the right connections to enable innovation to take place across those three horizons. I want to just use a, a slightly left field example to illustrate the idea of community and ecosystems coming together. So Grow New York City uh, actually has a, a, 
a mission or an agenda which is about providing uh, access to the best possible fresh produce in the most sustainable way that you can. And they provide uh, education on agriculture, conservation, green spaces. And so there are a number of shared interests that Grow New York City have. Most of us would not know anything about Grow New York City. But if you've been a visitor to New York City, you've most likely come across Union Square market days. And so uh, five times a week in Union Square, there is a farmer's market where a whole variety of producers uh, come together to sell their wares, but also as part of that experience, uh, there are a number of classes, educational opportunities. So you can watch and taste cooking demonstrations. There's a whole range of different vendors from farmers, fishers and bakers. Uh, and it's an experience that is created where you can collaborate. It's not just about turning up to a market to, to shop purely because it's organic produce. It's an opportunity to actually interact with the growers of your food, interact with the, the bakers, um, the, the different um, makers, if you like, from artisan breads through to things like maple syrup, wine and ciders, etc. So this is a consumer example, if you like, of a community and an ecosystem coming together uh, and the manifestation of that is in the marketplace, but part of that experience is also the opportunity to, to learn, grow, and understand different points of view in relation to uh, you know, sustainability, uh, uh, diet, etc. So that's that's the metaphor, if you like, for what it is that we're trying to develop here with the industry innovators community. So the program that we've put together for 2022 has three core streams spanning uh, January through to December. So there are a number of pieces of industry-sponsored original thought leadership, uh, multimedia content, from demystifying digital business to an industry innovation playbook and much more. The second stream is about creating live what now is uh, we call hybrid community events where you know there will be in-person opportunities to connect and there will be remote opportunities like we're experiencing right now uh, and in that we've got a number of different meetups planned for next year along with a series of showcase days where you can explore different types of technology or different problems or shared problems that you're trying to solve the third dimension to the community is this idea of um, special interest groups, discussion forums, Q&A sessions. And so the special interest groups are the ones that Michael talked about in relation to Horizon One. And uh, we're interested in, in getting a grassroots um, uh, litmus test as to the interest of various people to participate in some of those Horizon 2 and Horizon 3 initiatives. So the community is very much uh, centered around this idea of participation, that we want to uh, recruit you to play a part in uh, enabling this innovation to take place in a co collaborative way. I just want to share an example of some of the content there is. We have an Intel hub that has gone live uh, recently where there's a series on unboxing or demystifying uh, business transformation or digital business transformation. And so uh, in the first series, we're unpacking the fundamentals of digital business, uh, leveraging some of the concepts from the fourth industrial revolution. And then looking at topics such as uh, the implications of infinite computing and what does that mean? Uh, you know, this, this idea of hyperscalable digital infrastructure. And the idea of this uh, first series of materials is to enable us to uh, establish a common understanding of how the different pieces fit together in a digital transformation initiative 
from that scalable infrastructure to some of the intelligent uh, systems in, in the form of cyber physical systems, uh, applied AI, and this concept of a platform business model and how the nature of value is being, the, the, the nature of value delivery is changing in a digital business model. So with that said, I'd like to introduce Max or, or bring Max on again. And he's going to talk to you a little bit about uh, the second piece of content, the industry innovation playbook um, that he's working on at the moment. Oh, so thank you very much, um, Sam. Uh, yes, I mean, you've heard so much context today about how the world is changing and why it's important to um, more, more important ever to innovate with emerging technologies. And so, you know, even if that, you know, we talked about ecosystems and like electric vehicles and smart cities and those compelling events, um, it's clear that consumers are consuming more digitally than they've ever done, uh, in part driven by the pandemic, but also employees are working more remotely than they've ever done before. The business to business and business to employee relationships are being disrupted with technology. In the courses that I teach at university, I've often been asked, where do I start? And so part of the what I've got in store as part of this second sprint of um, uh, education is around how do you get started and how do you take that forward? If we move to the next slide. So really what I'm trying to do here is um, uh, unravel a playbook for legacy organizations. And um, quite often a common mistake is to consider, um, you know, starting with the technology. And what we're trying to do here is maybe, you know, kind of move away from the question of what can I do with blockchain or AI to uh, let, getting execs to think about the customer problem and framing that customer problem. What are you trying to resolve? And so um, to frame the customer problem, uh, often a starting point is understanding how value is created in the digital world. And so we start the exploration of the playbook by thinking about how value is really created in the digital world. Is, it, is, is digital value any different from analog value? How do digital practices unlock un, um, value? What opportunities emerge to utilize these technologies and how do I apply it to my business or my industry or my customer problem? And so that's where we start. And then we move to the next stage, um, if we move, which is to really open the aperture up a little bit to think about the core elements of any digital transformation, which really is around applying data and insights with technology to resolve a customer problem. So the three components, the three core elements are technology, customer and data. And so we, in the second part of the series, we'll be exploring real world examples of how organizations are bringing the three things together to unlock value for their, for their market. And then as we move forward um, into section three, we start thinking about, well, even if you understand how technology unlocks value and how to apply that in your organization, what's clear is that there is so much noise out there in the marketplace around these technologies. So how can you discern the facts from the friction? How do you, you know, move beyond the hype to understand how technologies are actually being implemented in your industry? How do you identify the technologies and digital practices that really matter to your business or, or your industry? And that's, the, the, the focus of the third part of the journey around um, the playbook. And then as we move into the fourth, um, this is a really interesting chapter, which is there are some really proven techniques um, and investments that you can make in your organization that really increase the speed to value, that drive adoption in your organization. And we start to explore what these might be, as well as the organizational change implications of putting them in place in your organization. So that that now starts to talk about your organization and what you need to do to create the right environment. But the next step then talks about things like um, you, the things that enable or disable your organization to change. And so here we start looking at the barriers and enablers to digital transformation. The things, the watchouts and, and gotchas that if you don't pay attention to, 
come and bite you uh, in you know as you try and implement these these organ, uh, digital transformation and uh, and emerging techno tech technology and new practices and so the that's the sort of the, the the next arm and then as you move forward all of this really is is culminating in a way and practical frameworks and, and uh, approaches to defining your digital ambition your organization's digital ambition how do you what language can you use to define it how can you engage your organization around um, a single view of what that digital ambition is uh, putting into practice all of those things about how values created um, how the technologies get identified how you can drive speed um, to value and all the things that you need to put in place so um, over the course of that second sprint we'll be introducing to you to practical techniques uh, along these uh, along these different areas and uh, really unravel a practical playbook for you to consider in your organization so hopefully that's of interest uh, as part of the second pillar that Dan talked about, which is the shared experiences uh, in this um, industry innovation network. Great. Thanks, Max. The, the next uh, thing that I just wanted to touch upon is the community portal uh, or app uh, that we are going to uh, run with the community. So it's actually a mobile first application you know, designed for the digital natives rather than us digital dinosaurs. Um, I, I guess I count myself as being one of them in the over 50s category. Um, the thing about this is that we wanted to actually uh, enable hybrid social um, connection. So going beyond just regular meetups, how do we actually maintain uh, connection not only when we're socially distanced in the pandemic, but when we're spread right across the region. So one of the things that this particular portal or app enables you, us to do is to live stream events like this, uh, and you can comment on the live streams as well. Uh, there's also a place that you can discover content, people, different tags, search for information from the community as well as um, have your own profile display in there. And so that you can make connections with other um, members within not only your own uh, region, but within the special interest groups or the working groups that we've talked about. So there are activity listings. And one of the great things about the app is that it's able to um, deliver push notifications. So you can be reminded of when the next upcoming event is. Um, the, the last thing that I wanted to talk about uh, was this idea of the marketplace. And so similar to that farmer's market or a trade show, we're establishing different zones where different buyers and sellers can come together uh, as part of the experience here. And so the partners that Dan introduced before uh, will have individual um, video listings uh, in the marketplace so that you can actually interact with uh, the solutions, the capabilities, the expertise that they have uh, and, and get a sense of what it is that uh, might be on offer to you before exploring it any further, you know, no obligation, so to speak. Um, and just to give you a sense of that, I've got one last couple of things here to, to share with you. And Michael, I, I wanted you to take a run at um, doing an elevator pitch somewhat similar to what you might find in the um, solutions marketplace. Oh, you're muted, Michael. It's the story of um, the pandemic. You're muted. Um, I'm absolutely keen to talk about this because we see we we absolutely see this every day in our uh, with clients and in, in our day to day uh, working across those three different horizons. We're very much part of this ecosystem, um, and we have to be to be relevant um, because if more often than not, our role is around leveraging our experience in the market and taking and in the industry and taking. Um, being able to ideate around a business theme and identifying the problem 
um, that we we need to innovate on, um, and and the solution to that is is a combination of different partners and technologies and um, platforms coming together to drive that outcome. So having access to uh, a, a marketplace of um, exceptionally cool uh, partners and, and solutions that we can bring to bear to the industry is, is absolutely um, fabulous. And, and for our community to be able to tap into that uh, is, is a huge advantage to our, to our industry. Um, that, that picture even uh, is, is telling because it, it is, it's obviously a, a piece of work that's being done on an asset, but it's multiple for components of data coming together and so and a user experience and 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 that that requires um, a, a community to come together to to drive that solution so i it's it's super cool to be able to be part of the community it's super cool to be able to access that level of expertise and capability in the in the marketplace great uh and then one other uh, example of a, a partner in the ecosystem is Section 4. And I think I mentioned earlier, or uh, Dan mentioned, that uh, one of the things about Section 4 is that they want to provide elite business education for all. And so uh, this is a uh, recently funded uh, enterprise out of the United States. And Scott Galloway is a professor from NYU Stern. And he's built uh, this organization that enables you to engage with short courses uh, or what they define as being sprints over a two week period around uh, different parts of the digital transformation journey, if you like, and the, uh, enabling you to gather the skills. And uh, uh, actually also it provides for an interesting networking opportunity. You get to participate in classes with people from all over the world. And so um, Scott Galloway does the uh, business strategy sprint. Uh, some of the other professors um, from, from various Ivy League schools um, uh, also provide, you know, different short course or sprints, um, uh, the one on product, the one on platform, and the one on data, uh, so that the understanding the principles of data and analytics is probably going to become an essential part of anybody's um, career going forward. Uh, especially as we start to embrace the use of artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, et cetera, beyond just pure analytics. Um, you know, and an interesting one here also is boosting success through experimentation. This is one of the primary challenges within enterprises is how do you allow enough space, time and room uh, for people within the uh, enterprise to be able to experiment uh, and effectively experiment and do something with the outcomes of that experimentation. So uh, Section 4 is something that I would thoroughly endorse as uh, an alumni member, having done a number of their courses. It adds a considerable amount of value in a short space of time if you're looking at any form of digital innovation initiative. So lastly, um, just a couple of things to talk about. Um, what we're very much interested in is you getting involved. So if you haven't joined up already, um, please do so. If you um, uh, want to let us know what interests you have, we'll be sending some emails uh, and asking you to um, uh, give your feedback. Um, but beyond that feedback, we're very interested to hear what topics or issues that you might see as being worthwhile being explored by the industry innovators community. The second thing is uh, that to stay tuned, there are the marketplace and the community portal app that I just mentioned will be launched shortly. And if you're interested in being an early adopter of the community portal, um, please put your hand up. And then the last thing just to touch on as we hit right on the hour 
is that we will be doing the formal launch of the 2022 program in early February next year. So I very much hope that what we've talked about today is of interest to you and uh, it's something that you feel inclined to get involved in. So thanks to the presenters, Max and, and Michael, and Dan is now offline. Uh, thank you very much.